Welcome back to the computational tools course. We're going to be going over a uh, homework problem today on the Chemical Engineering 263 website. There's the address. And then just come down to the, uh, the homework on the right here. Okay, so that's under course information, homework. And then if you just scroll down to assignment 14, then uh, we're just going, you can see the PDF here. Um, or if you want to download um, some of the files, just go and select the files link. And I'm going to go grab those from my downloads folder. Okay, so there's homework 14. Uh, what we're going to do is cover how to solve uh, systems of equations today in Python. And uh, so here I have a version 3 of the IPython notebook. Go ahead and use that if you have version 4 plus. Um, I'm going to go ahead and start the um, IPython um, environment. Okay, so just go ahead and search for IPython and select the IPython notebook. And then once it, once it opens up, it'll bring up a web page. And we'll have four problems that we're going to go through. Um, a couple of them are um, pretty easy. Those would be kind of like warm-up exercises. And then a couple, they're going to be a little bit more substantial. So we're going to go to the desktop and just browse to where I had those uh, saved. Um, I'm going to select the top one, the homework 14. IPython. Okay, so here it is once it opens up. Um, the first thing that we want to do is use fsolve to find the roots of this polynomial. Okay, so we have uh, f of x equals 2x squared plus 3x minus 10. So let's go ahead and just um, define uh, a new function. Okay, so we're going to define and I'll just call this um, f of x and um, inside that function, we'll compute, um, we can compute uh, y equals uh, 2 times x squared plus 3 times x minus 10. Okay, and um, we'll just make those floating point numbers with the decimal. Okay, and then we'll just return y. Okay, so if we um, just plug in a couple values, Let's say we just print f of 2, okay, and then uh, that equals 4. So if you plugged in 2, it would just plug in um, to this function right here, okay, and then uh, evaluate uh, 4. Let's say we want to print, um, let's see, I'm going to scroll that back to the normal size here. Let's say we want to print uh, something like, okay, so let me get this back, print, and then F3, okay, and then uh, print um, F4. Okay, so we could do all of those and just get values, and you'll see that you know the numbers are increasing as we uh, start going up. But let's say we want to compute a whole bunch of these values. Okay, so let's just get a new uh, vector X, um, and I'll use NumPy and Linspace and I'll go between negative 5 and 3. Okay, so let's just go ahead and print out what x is. Um, and you'll see that NumPy is not defined. And, and one of the things that happened here is I didn't run this first cell um, that was up there. So I'm going to go ahead and run this one first just to import NumPy and then also the SciPy optimize, which we're going to use in just a second. So if I run that again, I see I have between negative 5 and 3 for the x values. Um, let's just go ahead and plot those. Okay, so I'm going to add something to the uh, packages up here um, at the top. And uh, this will just be um, import um, a mat plot lib dot pi plot um, as plt. But before I do that in IPython, I have to do the mat plot lib um, inline, okay, to be able to show the figures. So I'm going to run this one again, the very top one. Okay, um, let's see, I have a pi uh, plt, let's see, mat, mat plot lib dot pi, oh, plot, okay, there it is. Okay, so I just messed up the spelling there, and um, then I can go ahead and plot this. Okay, so plt plot. And I'll plot x versus f of x. Okay, so I, there I have my x values, and then I plotted it. 
um, between negative 5 and 3. So let me take away this print statement right here just so I don't have the numbers still. And let me also plot um, just some zero values there as well. So I'll do x and then numpy zeros. Um, and then that will be the same length as x. Okay, if you don't have it the same length as x, it'll give you an error. Okay, and then I see my uh, values. So the, the solution to this, uh, to this optimization problem up here, is going to be where we find the roots of this polynomial. Okay, so we could have done the quadratic formula, for example. Um, you know, just the um, root one equals a negative b plus or minus uh, square root, okay, of b squared minus 4ac divided by 2a. Okay, we could have done that, but we want to use, um, here's a graphical method. Let's also use the f solve method. Okay, so that's going to be the function solve method from the scipy optimized package. And to do that, we'll just say that um, x equals f solve. And uh, the, the, uh, we're just going to have f as our function, and then we'll give it a guess value as well. I'll just say it's equal to um, 1. Okay, so I do that, and then um, let me go ahead and print x as well. Okay, so there is x 1.6. So that's where uh, it intersects um, right over here. But I guessed 1. And so it converged to this solution right here. But let's go ahead and try to find this solution over here as well. Okay, so that just involves giving it a different guess value. And so I'm just going to say that is going to be negative 2, so it's a little bit closer to the other side. And then when I run it again, I see I get negative 3.1. Okay, so there's my other solution um, right here. Okay, so we solved this problem by... Uh, using f solve to find the roots of this polynomial. There were other ways we could do it. Um, we showed graphical, but you could also use like the quadratic equation, for example, for the simple uh, second order uh, polynomial. Um, but let's say we have something just a little bit more complicated. Let's go on to problem two. So we want to use f solve to find the solution of the following two equations. So here we have f of x and y with uh, an expression on the right. And then we also have g of x and y. And we want both of these to equal 0 in this case. So, um, so now we can also do the graphical method for this. Um, you know, we could, uh, we could get, um, you know, some, some values that, uh, uh, you know, just guess and check until we got the right values. But let's go ahead and use f solve for this one as well. I'll go ahead and just define, um, I'll just call this f of, uh, I'll put z in this case, so z0, um, let's say that x is equal to z0, uh, and then y is equal to z1, okay, so I'm going to pass in a vector of z0 and z1, and then I'll have my, uh, my function, which is going to be just a, a size 2, so that's what I'm going to be returning, is just a vector of size 2. I'll just initialize it with zero values right now. And then let me define the first one. So f0, that's just going to be f of x, y. Okay, and I'll just say that is, uh, yeah, I'll do f0 there. Okay, and then that is going to be 2, okay, times x, um, x uh, to the and then 2 divided by 3, okay, and then we have plus, and then that's going to be y to the uh, 2 uh, divided by 3, I'll just put those in floating point numbers, and then minus uh, 9 to the um, 1 divided by 3. Okay, so there's my first equation, and then my second one, um, I'll just say that is going to be f1. Okay, I didn't want to name that g because I've got to return it in this uh, vector f right here. Um, okay, and then uh, that's going to be x um, squared divided by 4 plus, and then we'll do um, y uh, to the 0 0.5 minus 1. 
Okay, so now we can just check some values here. So let's say I had a, uh, let's go ahead and print F2 if we plug in values of one and one. Okay, so I have, let's see, some invalid syntax here. Okay, I'm just missing another parenthesis. Um, so that says none, and that's because I didn't return anything, okay, for my function. And so I just need to return f. Okay, so there are my values of f0 and f1. That's really f and g. Um, so I could continue just, you know, going and plugging in different values um, until I got uh, both of those to equal 0. I'd have to be checking for quite a while, or I could rearrange it and solve it algebraically. But let's use f solve instead. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and just use, um, just create an initial array and then let's see, solve it. So let's just say that z equals, and then we'll do f solve, and then we'll just say f2, and then just give it an initial guess here for some values. And I'll just say that's 1 and 1. Okay, and it told us to, in the problem statement, to guess one and one right there. Okay, and then let's go ahead and just print out the solution. And then we'll print uh, Z. Okay, so there's my solution to X and Y. And let's just go ahead and evaluate uh, the functions as well. So I'll have F2 of Z. And um, let's just make sure those are equal to zero. So you can see that... Um, they are within uh, a very tight tolerance, negative 2.6 times 10 to the minus 15, and 1.3 times 10 to the minus 15. Okay, so um, these were the two warm-up problems, just solving uh, one variable and then uh, two variables as well. Um, for the next video, we're going to move on to problem three and then also uh, problem four, okay? Um, and that is just a little bit more complicated. Problem three is an adiabatic flame temperature uh, that we're going to be computing. And uh, most of the code is given below, but it's just an exercise in setting up the problem and then using F-solve to, um, to solve it. Okay, and then in problem four, we'll do that one next. And that's just a system of six equations and six unknowns for three pipes in a series. Um, okay, so this concludes uh, this video tutorial. Again, just a couple things to solve uh, for these. You can use a graphical method. Uh, you know, if it's very simple, maybe one or two variables. Um, but anytime it gets over that, we've got to start using uh, either numerical or analytic techniques that are, are typically software uh, driven.